Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to our next video of Build Deploy Test with Jenkins 2.0 and Docker. And we have been talking about this declarative pipeline syntax of Jenkins and we are now in a verge of completing that. But in our last video, we saw an error which was actually a very, very intentional error that I made so that I can show you another feature of Visual Studio Code. So what I made last time in our last video was I created a when step within the parallel stage and we saw that the code was actually not working for us. But if you think of this, if this Jenkins file is kind of a file which is not very intelligent enough in Visual Studio, which is not even going to tell you any error or something like that, you can actually use what is called as a validate Jenkins file plugin. So once you run this particular validate Jenkins file plugin, it will tell you there is an error which is happening within your code, something like this. Well, where is this magic happened? Well, guys, behind the scene, what I did is I actually installed an extension, what is called as a Jenkins file validator. You can see there is something called as the Jenkins pipeline linter connector. Uh, this is nothing but a validation of a Jenkins file as well. So this basically validates our Jenkins file, which we are actually working with. So this is more like a code guys, because our Jenkins file is more like a code. We of course need a validation because this is more like a plain text. We cannot tell that this particular code that we are writing over here uh, is actually correct or not. So in order for this to be executed, we have what is called as a Jenkins pipeline linter connector of Visual Studio Code, which will help you to do a validation as well. And apart from this installation, I also made what is called as a settings change. So if you go over here within my user settings of the Jenkins over here, you can also create a workspace setting if you want, uh, but this is the uh, user settings that I have made. And you can see that I have specified the Jenkins pipeline path over here and then the Jenkins username and password, something like this, admin and admin. And then I also specified the Jenkins server which I'm running and the pipeline model converter validate. So if you're wondering how I got this information, if you go to the Jenkins pipeline over here, it actually tells you all these details for you over here. So these are the information I actually grabbed and then I just pasted within my settings and these things are actually coming for me over here. I can probably add the same thing like the settings within my Visual Studio uh, code of the workspace settings so that you don't really have to worry about all these settings. I can probably add that within our GitHub repo. But yes, this is the whole idea. So once you install the Jenkins pipeline linter connector, you will also gain the ability to validate the Jenkins file and make sure that you are not doing something wrong like what we did in our earlier video. So you can see that this is what happened. So the when is actually sitting in a wrong place and that's why it tells you that this is wrong. Well, it is not that intuitive, but still, yes, it proves the point that this is actually working fine. So. If I put this over here uh, and if I just do a validate Jenkins this time, it tells me that, aha, this Jenkins file is all good right now. So basically this when should be sitting within a stage, not within a parallel itself. So that's the whole idea. Now, if I do a validate Jenkins, you can see that the Jenkins is all good. So no problem on that side. So that's the major thing, guys. This is the reason why I made this intentional exception. And now if I go over here and let's say added when in correct place of stage and let's check in the code and I also do a git push and now hopefully this code should not be throwing us an error so let's try to rerun this particular build oops it's not happening I guess let's go to the branch let's try to execute this all right so now you can see that the execution has happened and you can see that the deployment is basically completely skipped for us over here. So the deployment is completely skipped because this is a development branch and because this is a development branch, this particular deployment is not even going to happen, which is pretty cool. So now we have completely skipped our deployment if the branch is actually a develop branch. But if it is a master branch, then you would expect the application to be deployed. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be creating a pull request of this particular branch so that I can merge that within 
the master branch without deleting this particular development branch what i'm going to do is uh, merge the when stage of jenkins and i'm going to create a pull request to the master branch over here it is now created by exit automation so i'm just gonna create a merge okay merge the pull request i'm just gonna confirm I'm not going to delete the branch. I'm just going to leave the development branch as it is. So this branch is going to still exist there, which is all good. And now if I go to the code, you can see that I will have a develop branch and a master branch for us, which is also pretty good. And now if I go to the Jenkins pipeline over here, and if I go to the uh, develop branch, if I try to execute this code and this one, what will happen is within the master, Basically, the deployment is going to happen. You can see that the wait for interactive input comes in. Do you want to do, do a deployment? If I do a proceed, it's going to happen. Whereas, if I go to the develop branch over here, you can see that the development is complete. The deployment is completely skipped in the develop branch. And the reason is because we don't want the deployment to happen if it is going to be a develop branch. So this is what it is, guys. This is the power of pipelines in Jenkins. And this is the power of the declarative syntax, declarative pipeline syntax of Jenkins, which makes all sort of things much, much easily. We can even empower, we can even leverage the power of declarative syntax even more in our upcoming videos while we actually are going to work with Dockers and how we can create an agent of the Docker to run the build for us and how we can do a real deployment of applications and all those details. But yes, this is what is the declarative pipelines of Jenkins. And once again, thank you very much for watching this video and you have a great day.